Good morning, this is Monty once again. Uh, we're back at it again, of course. Today is Sunday. Uh, I think it's a very nice Sunday. After, uh, no, it's not Sunday, it's Saturday. <laughs> Excuse me. Very nice Saturday afternoon. I get a little bit ahead of myself. It's Saturday, and uh, I'm going to go to the gym and going to work out for as long as I can. There's a potluck going on between. Uh, with some friends, we're going to celebrate probably seven, eight birthdays uh, and have a potluck at the same time and uh, just basically get together, get together with some, with some friends from a particular group that meets um, usually at least once a month just to have social events and, and hang out. So hopefully I'll be able to get a, put in a good workout this morning. And... Um, and this afternoon, rather, and then go over to the uh, the, the uh, potluck and, and take it easy and have a good time with some friends. So, so how are you guys doing today? <laughs> Hope everything's going fine where you are. Um, I think the firemen are getting the handle on the fires out here in southern, sunny Southern California. Uh, so that's good. The only problem is the places uh, where the fires were are, comple- are completely devastated. Donald Trump is supposed to make a be on, a, be on Air Force One right now, I think, on his way out to Northern California, to su- Southern and Northern California. Hopefully, to take a look at the actual damages, it's pro- I think it's about time. Um, that, I don't know if he even toured out here last time. We had a fire up north which doesn't make a whole lot of sense considering how big these fires are. Um, Typically, once they get, you know, when any natural disaster gets so big where you you have to uh, ask for federal emergency funding, usually that means that you, you, I think you want to fly out and see exactly what's going on there for president, I think. Uh, Anyway, um, so what else is going on? Look like uh, Muhammad Sal bin, uh, Muhammad, Muhammad Sal bin Laden, or whatever his name is. Can't remember his, his complete name. Uh, the, the 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 head in Saudi Arabia, uh, the current uh, prince out there running the country. Um, relatively young guy. I think he's only like thirty five years old at the most, but. Anyway, he seems to be have, seems to have been implicated with the murder of this particular Khashoggi guy, who was uh, I think it was an ambas- no a journalist, um, and in the Turkish Turkey embassy, I think it was. Um, but anyway, the Muhammad was implicated by the CIA, CIA of all people, of all organizations. So that is a very serious allegation. So we'll see what happens with that. That's going to put a little cramp in the re- relations between the uh, uh, United States and, and, um, and Saudi Arabia, definitely. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, what else is going on, guys? Uh, let's see. Looks like... Um, a lot of the a lot of Republicans have lost a, a little lost a lot more ground, I think, than they anticipated as a result of the midterms. A lot of the a lot of uh, former stronghold Republican areas, not to mention Orange County, which we'll mention anyway, that went completely Democratic. So it looks like uh, a number of those Republican strongholds have definitely have definitely definitely flipped. And so we have a lot of women and a lot of Democratic women that are going to be taking a decent, prominent positions uh, uh, go, going forward. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how much we get done under under, the, under with this new mix of, of people in Washington D.C. Um, what else is going on? Man, oil's coming, oil seems to be coming down, so a lot of people get a little bit of breather as far as affordability of oil when they go to their gas pumps. Uh, look like a 50, 57 barrel, 57, approximately $57 a barrel. 
that should be good news for a number of people. Even though inflation is creeping up across the board in a number of different other areas, uh, groceries, materials for this and that and the other, uh, seem like they're on the rise, so I'm not quite sure whether or not people are going to be celebrating too much, but even but gas is a major issue, so definitely going to breathe a sigh of relief for those people who have been paying too much for gas, including myself. Um, let's uh, move right along. My name is Monty Henry, owner of DPL Surveillance Equipment. I run a full-service surveillance and security equipment company. We have lifetime guarantees and warranties on all the products, 24-7, 365 tech sales and customer support. Uh, the largest inventory of items, not only can you buy, but you can rent as well, uh, and including we have a very large articles directory. The articles directory encompasses, actually, more than just articles. There's articles, there's podcasts, there's blogs, there's demonstration videos, and... Um, they're growing in number every single day. I try to publish at least one article or podcast or blog or something. And, um, you know, I have been uh, keeping up pretty good so far. So um, go there, take a look at the free media, educational materials for anyone who wants to read and learn about this, that, and the other. We talk about uh, cybersecurity. We cover Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. We cover health and fitness. We, we, we cover economics and finance. Uh, we also cover surveillance and counter-surveillance, of course. And then we mention every once in a while terrorists, anti-terrorists, uh, technologies and such. So go there and take a look around. And there's a mis miscellaneous category where everything else fits into. We're going to add something to the... Um, let me see. This topic is going to be... Um, let's put it under economics and finance, mainly because it has to do with... Uh, uh, the, the, the <laughs> retirement and, and the way people are uh, coping with retirement. So we're going to put that under economics and finance. Um, what else? Let me see. Uh, oh, yeah, I do sell Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Bcash and Ethereum in my shopping cart. For those of you who want to get away from the tr traditional finance system, legacy industry, dinosaurs, antiquated finance industry, and step over into the cryptocurrency space, you can use your cryptocurrencies in our shopping cart. If you can't use them in anybody else's shopping cart, as far as spy companies are concerned, you can use them at our company. We, we, we've, uh, we, we, like, we like to be innovative like that in terms of offering you different choices and alternatives. So use your cryptocurrencies in our shopping cart. Uh, that way you can take advantage of uh, actually sticking a, a finger in the eye of the MasterCards and the Visas and the American Expresses. The UBS banks, the Wells Fargo City Banks of the world, HSBCs, you name it. Uh, all of these companies are corrupt. They've been doing everything to absolutely devastate our economy and devastate the wallets of the consumers as much, you know, as, much as possible, as, as often as possible, without any rec recrimination. They, they don't go to jail. You don't find uh, that uh, the Jamie Diamonds and the, of the world and the... Uh, the people who run Wells Fargo City Bank, you don't find those guys uh, facing prison terms or jail sentences or anything like that. Uh, so some, somehow they get away with it. And while, while we have to uh, fear for our lives whenever we even get a, a small minor crime or something that we've committed. So take a look at that and, and uh, at the cryptocurrency usage and, and, and see what's so appealing about that. And, and try to find, understand why you should put 5 or 10% of your own portfolios into cryptocurrencies to safeguard against an economic collapse. I, uh, so it's nothing, nothing like having a backup plan, a plan B, just in case. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, the website is newly redesigned. We, uh, we're constantly working on it, of course. It's a never-ending process, but um, I think you guys are going to find that it works very good, it works very fast, and... Again, tons of new products, tons of used products. Um, we're going to have polls, P-O-L-L-S. We're going to have polls um, whereby we're asking you questions, asking your opinions and comments and input on certain things. So look for um, a category called polls uh, when you go to the articles and, and uh, those, those various uh, 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 areas. And look for polls and, 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 and take a look and see where, we, where you can provide your input on something, the hot, some, some particular topic of the day or whatever. 
um, that'll be that should be fun and, and interesting to get feedback from people and get some discussion going as far as polls are concerned. Um, what else? Uh, let's see. Mm, I can't think of anything else, so I guess we'll look at the article. Again, today's article is going to be filed under probably economics and finance, okay? And it has to do with retirement. The uh, title is, I was hoping to be retired. The cost of supporting parents and adult children. Again, I was hoping to be retired. The cost of supporting parents and adult children. More Americans are being squeezed by the burden of caring for two generations. Two, two generations. <laughs> just when they thought they could kick back. When Barb Strickard married and her husband wrote down a one-year plan for their life together and a three-year plan, five-year, ten-year, and ten-year plans as well. Let's see. Let me move away from the dog barking. Um, their meticulous mapping of the future eventually culminated in the retirement, the retirement plan. Barb would leave the corporate world in her early 60s and run a small bed and breakfast on their 11-acre wooded plot in the Ozark Mountains. She and her husband, Brian, would convert the garage into a recording studio to promote local musicians. The best laid plans of Barb and Brian have gone awry. One bedroom of the would-be B&B in their walkout basement is now occupied by Barb's 83-year-old mother, and the other by her 34-year-old daughter. Barb has reached 64, thanks to her new responsibilities, can no longer afford to quit. I was hoping to be retired by the, by the age I'm at now, she says. That's not going to happen. I'm going to work until I can't do the job. There is a growing number of baby boomers who find themselves caring for both their elderly parents and their adult children rather than kicking back at retirement age. They face the kicking back, they face the strain of constant caregiving and derailed dreams as well as added expenses. It's one more reason why many Americans are entering their retirement years as unprepared financially as any generation in years. A study by the Pew Research Center found 50, 52% of U.S. residents in their 60s uh, actually, 17.4 million people are financially supporting either a parent or an adult child, up from 45 percent in 2005. Among them, about 1.2 million support both a parent and a child, more than double the number a decade earlier. According to an, an analysis of the Pew findings and census data, the squeeze is coming from both ends, with lifespans growing longer. The number of 60-somethings with living parents has more than doubled since 1998 to about 10 million, according to an Urban Institute analysis of University of Chicago, Michigan data, and they are increasingly expensive to care for. At the same time, many boomers are helping their children deal with career or health problems or are sharing the heavy burden of student loans. Uh, Barb Strickard's retirement plan fell victim to several bad turns. Turn, turns. Her mother, rendered a shut-in by arthritis, didn't have enough money for assisted li living facilities. Her daughter had to move back home after her own health setbacks. I can make all of the plans in the world right now, and, and it doesn't mean anything, says Barb. Barb and Brian, living in Benton County, the, birth, the birthplace of Walmart, Barb made a career out of helping manufacturers and suppliers service the retail giant. Now she's director of category management and business analytics for a Cincinnati-based Totes uh, Isotoner Corporation, which sells gloves, umbrellas, and other products. In 1995, Barb was divorced with two children when a friend invited her to a birthday party at Alibas, a country and western dance bar in... Uh, I think it's alibi, al alibis, <laughs> I think. A country and western dance bar in Rogers, Arkansas, where Brian was a bouncer. And a knowing chicken farmer kept asking her to dance 
Brian elbowed him aside, took her hand, and led her onto the dance floor. Six months later, the two eloped. Barb had confessed only days earlier that she was 41 years, 40, 41, 13 years Brian Sr. He didn't mind. The minister at the small timbered chapel pulled the, the, the vestment over the lures hanging from his fishing vest, rolled out a burgundy carpet, set up some fake flowers, and declared them married. The next, cup, the next couple in line threw rice on the stickers, the strict strickers, as they headed off to a two-day honeymoon in Branson, Missouri. Barb sang for years at church while Brian ran the sound equipment during services. Now they attend Saturday night services at Fellow, Fellowship Bible Church in, in Rogers, as well as small Bible study um, sessions every other uh, Tuesday. The Strickers are planners. Barb had long envisioned living in a house in the woods. In the 1980s, she set aside a house design she spotted in a country living magazine, and after marrying, she posted the picture on the fridge. Brian, a heating and air conditioning technician, recreated the house by hand on the lot by Beaver Lake. After an errant candle burned the house down in 2003, he built it again. They began planning retirement when Barbara was 55. The plan evolved over the years, but the gist was that they turned their 3,800 square foot home into a B&B, plant an, an organic garden, call it Whispering Pines Farm and Home, and attract the craft fair, craft fair and motorcycle rally crowds. Brian sold his HVAC business in 2014 and spent 14 weeks in Nashville taking a sound engineering course. He returned home, bought used high-end microphones, and converted the garage into a hobby studio. Excuse me. Early clients include a local resort owner who's recording a Christmas album and a nephew with a death metal band. Marlene, <laughs> a running Strickard family joke was that Brian and Barb had built a home far too big for a couple of empty nesters. Barb's children, Rebecca and Michael, and Brian's daughter, Crystal, had all moved out. Brian had yet finished the Brian, Brian hadn't yet finished the studio, however, when Barb's mother, Marlene Kreitz, moved in with them. Marlene grew up, uh, grew up the child of sharecroppers in Dover, Kansas, and married Jim Kreitz when she was still in high school. Jim had a cherry red hot a cherry cherry red hot rod he built from a thirty two Ford a thirty two Ford at age nineteen. Marlene used to push start his first uh, dragster. They raised Barb, her brother, and two sisters in Tulsa, where Marlene worked as an administrator in a doctor's office. Marlene, uh, many parents of boomers reached retirement age in the mid 1990s, as companies were cutting back on pensions and leaving their retirees to fend for themselves with Social Security and 401k plans. Marlene and Jim never built up a financial cushion. They had a bit of savings and Social Security. Marlene used to pray, God, please don't let me get sick before 65 because we don't have any money to pay the bill. And their retirement, the, the Cresses lived in a holiday Rambler RV but couldn't afford gas for road trips. Hoping to make them more comfortable, Barb bought her parents a single-wide mobile home they installed in a Tulsa trailer park. One night in 2012, Jim set the automatic coffee maker for his morning cup, went to bed, and never woke up. At first, Marlene tried living alone in Tulsa, but Barb and her sisters worried about her safety in a, in a declining neighborhood. The Strickers moved the trailer to a mobile home park not far from their house. After Marlene just stayed in bed, depressed about Jim and their son Donnie, who had died in his 50s, getting around was difficult. Marlene had suffered from arthritis since the 1960s and had both hips replaced, one of them twice. One day she crashed her car into the front deck of her mobile home. A neighbor spotted her trying to call up to the deck back try, trying to call up to the back door. Barb and her sisters decided Marlene could no longer live alone. A year-long stay with Barb's sister in Missouri didn't work out. <laughs> 
In April, 15, in April 2015, Marley moved into Barb's basement, a suite that now has a small kitchen, two bedrooms, and a sitting room. Marlene's knees hurt so much that she now can't move around without a walker. Arthritis in her wrists and shoulders makes it hard for her to play gospel and ragtime on the keyboard in her sitting room. She's kind of a Liberace honky-tonk, says Brian. I don't go anywhere, she says. I get lonesome. I really do. She spends her days in fuzzy mo mo moccasins and a cushioned chair watching NASCAR races and the Weather Channel. Throughout the day, Marlene and Barb swap text, text messages with updates on who's leading the qualifying rounds and who's getting heavy rain. Marlene wanted to believe Barb's house was a waypoint on her return to Tulsa. An assisted living facility there would have cost $3,500 a month. Between her savings and her $1,106 monthly Social Security take-home, her money would have run out in three and a half years. According to Marlene O'Brien, that was three and a half years ago. Marlene's arrival was fraught for Barb. No meal was right, no conversation to Marlene's satisfaction. Finally, Brian snapped Marlene out of her torpor. These are the facts of life, he said. He chided her. You have to straighten up or we're going to put you in one of those homes you don't want to be in. Marlene couldn't escape the sense that she was a burden. For years, she insisted on doing Brian and, and Barb's laundry. Lately, she has been too fragile to take on chores. You're doing too much for me, she would tell Barb. Barb would counter with a verse memorized from the book of Timothy. Anyone who does not provide for their relatives, and especially for their own household, has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. I know that if I want her to stop arguing, I should pull out the good book, says Barb. Marlene stopped arguing. Rebecca, four months after Marlene moved in, in August 2015, Bob's daughter Rebecca Wilkins moved into the other bedroom basement. Rebecca moved out years earlier managing an apartment building for work while kayaking and re repelling for fun with a snorting laugh that itself made her snort with laughter. Then at age 25, old medical conditions flared up. She had been born with spinal bifida and other spinal problems. She started having seizures Back surgery left her with so much scar tissue that she is now inoperable. She blew two discs in her back. Everything kind of collapsed, Rebecca says. I went from being a normal person to completely not, not functional in life at all. She puts her hand to her hip when she gets out of a chair, levering herself to her feet like someone more than twice her age. She can't kayak anymore. It would leave her sobbing in pain with bed. Uh, and, and, it would, her, it would leave her sobbing in bed with pain. The physical issues coincide with psychological challenges. She has been diagnosed with bipolar and anxiety disorders. A couple of rough relationships, relationships left Rebecca with symptoms of post-traumatic stress, and she remains persecuted by night terrors, she says. Sometimes putting laundry in the machine constitutes a full day's achievements. Her only income is $700 in monthly disability payments, while Medicaid covers her drug bills and Medicare her doctor's bills. The strickers pay for clothes, housing, food, car insurance, and everything else that is beyond Rebecca's meager income. Brian is building her cottage across the circle drive from the main house. Rebecca hopes it will restore a bit of her independence. She worries she won't be able to, she won't be able to clean it herself. She rarely forgets to tell her parents that she loves them. If I didn't have these two amazing people in my life, Rebecca says, I'd be homeless. Full house. Tending to a sick child would have been one thing, but after adding an aging parent, the Strickers had to rework their plan. Barb earned her money, then Brian, by, I'm sorry, Barb earned more money than Brian could as an HVAC technician so she put off retirement indefinitely. Brian would stay home as a day shift caregiver. At, a, at 7 a.m. each morning, the Strickers hammer out the day's schedule on a color-coded 
shared scheduling map. Medical appointments, pharmacy runs, grocery shopping. Rebecca is orange. Brian is purple. Barb is blue. Barb gets a month of paid vacation. She and Brian used to spend it hiking in Colorado or Wyoming or taking in the sun in Florida. Now they spend vacations at home. One of Barb's sisters takes in Marlene for a month each year, but that doesn't cover Rebecca. They're hoping that one sister will move in for a week or two next year so they can take a road trip to Yosemite and the Pacific Northwest for Barb's 65th. Of all my friends in this age group, I'm the only one who's still working, she says. I have an idea of what I'd like to do, but I don't feel at liberty to do it right now. Barb has $1,000 a month pension from the old job, and the couple has retirement accounts. The money would be enough to retire on if there was just the two of them, they say. But they are also saving for Rebecca's long-term care and covering some of Marlene's daily expenses. The only thing that worries me is that my health holds out long enough to generate the income I have to generate, Barb says. She's looking into other ways to make money, renting out rooms and perhaps or, or consulting. More than a third of people in their 60s who are caring for parents reported a moderate to high level of financial strain as a result. A survey by the National Alliance for Caregiving and AARP found. Some 18 months ago, Barb started to experience growing anxiety. Brian watched her essential tremors worsen, a gentle bobbing of her head. Six months later, Barb found herself sleeping 14 hours a night, sapped of energy and joy. In January, she started to feel tightness in her chest. The cardiologist diagnosed her with stable angina brought on by a blocked artery and compounded by stress. Angina and cholesterol drugs helped ease her symptoms. When things get especially tough, she calls in friends from church, a group she calls her prayer warriors. At one low point, Barb sought advice from a social worker from a nearby senior center. The social worker warned that she wouldn't be of much use to her family if she wore herself out. Barb followed her advice and hired someone to clean and shop. Marlene pays her share. During a mother-daughter visit to the hair salon last month, Barb asked Rebecca to take on light administrative light to take on light administrative duties, open Barb's bills, make a few appointments. Rebecca was thrilled at the prospect of regaining a sense of purpose. In her optimistic moments, Rebecca believes she'll be independent again someday, perhaps even pain-free. In her darker ones, she fears she will never be the same as she was before. I feel for my parents, she says. I know this is not the relationship they wanted with their adult child. Marlene hopes for her own quick death so she'll no longer be a worry to her family. Excuse me. I'm on the... I'm of the age now where I'm looking forward to changing address, stepping over to the heavenly side, she says. As images of wildfires and floods flicker across the weather channel screen, Barb's, Barb has had Barb has let go of any bitterness she may have had felt when her own dreams were shelved. You have to finally get to the attitude that whatever will be, will be, she says. You don't abandon family because something's inconvenient. She and Brian no longer write down their plans. So that's it for that particular article and podcast, you guys. Um, this is really illustrative of what's happening nowadays. You have baby boomers who are going into retirement and who are thinking about, you know, the, the long vacation trips and the, the, the frequent vacation trips or whatever and and the, the, um, the things that they want to do with their extra money, extra time or something. But as we're finding out, more and more boomers are getting it from both ends. The children uh, are coming back home, either because of, like the article mentions, health and medical-related issues or um, just problems with career choices, bad career choices. Sometimes, you know, you, you, you think you're pre- preparing for the proper career and you find out that there's uh, very little opportunity out there. So between the combination of bad choices and health-related issues with the children and then you have 
um, you had your parents, the, of the baby boomers who were coming back because they can't afford assisted living in the, in the, in the communities where they want to live or they should live. So, you know, the, the rent is too high or whatever. The cost of living is just too high in the assisted living centers. So they're coming back home and they have extraordinary medical expenses associated with taking care of the elderly people with the parents. So the boomers are really in a bind. So uh, just make sure you guys understand that a lot of people are under a lot of financial stress um, because of situations like this and that you need to think about uh, what you can do to counter this from happening uh, to you as much as possible. So, you know, work with the children, uh, check on the parents, and see, make sure everybody's okay and going in the right direction. (laughs) So hopefully when it's time for the boomers to, you know, live the life that they deserve, that they work so hard for, that they don't end up just being caregivers for the children and parents. Anyway, as we like to say at the conclusion of every podcast, uh, keep your eyes and ears open and stay safe out there. And we will talk to you guys later. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye.